this video we're going to talk about creating purchase orders for services. Why would you want to do that? I have recommended doing this to my clients in the past because let's say you have a 1099 contractor of yours doing a project for you. Your client hires you, you hire your 1099 to do this project and you give your client a budget of 20 hours. So you want to make sure that you're tracking your 1099's hours and how many hours they're working on the project. So maybe you build out at 20 hours, but you want them to complete it in 15 hours because then you have five hours to do some review and clean up. All right. So let's go ahead and create a purchase order for services. Okay. So you have your purchase order area right here. You're going to choose which vendor you're working with, or if it's a new vendor, then you can go ahead and put that vendor in here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Marine as my vendor. I always use the tab field to go through all the fields, so tab over. Is there a certain class that Marie falls under? Maureen falls under. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a remodel class or new construction class. Okay. Going all the way down, actually, Marine's a CPA, so that kind of seems funny. How about Hamlin Metal? And it's new construction. Okay, so what item are we talking about that, that they're going to be working on? Let's say they're going to be working on installation. Hamlin Metal is going to work on installation for me. And I want to have 15 hours in there. Their default rate is defaulting at $35 an hour for installation. If this is for a particular client, you can go ahead and mark that there so that all the information flows through to that client's project. And so it, tech, it, it figures out for me 15 hours times $35 an hour. Our PO is going to be for $525. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say save and close here. All right. Now we get our first bill from Hamlin. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter a bill here. Type in Hamlin Metal because that's who the bill's from. It's going to pop up right there. You have open purchase orders for this vendor. Do you want to receive against one of these? I'm going to say yes. I see PO number 6238. That's the one that's noted on their bill. Say OK. And it comes across pulling all the data across all 15 hours. Let's say this is a bill for 12 15 2015 and it was only for five hours. All right, so five hours. All the other information is pulled over that's important. The customer job, it's not billable, what PO number it was on, what class it was. So all this information flows over from the purchase order. And I have a quantity of five. So I'm going to go ahead and say save and new. All right, or save and close. Now let's pretend it's a week later and I get my second bill for five hours from Hamlin. So I'm going to go in to enter bills again, type in Hamlin. It again tells me that there's an open purchase order. Yes, and I want to apply this purchase order and populate it. And notice, instead of popping up 15 hours, it only pops up 10 because it's keeping track for me that I only have 10 hours left on this purchase order with Hamlin Metal. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they worked for four this week. All right. And it's not billable. All the other information stays just as needed. I'm going to go ahead and say save and close again. All right, then I get a bill in the mail and it says it's final bill. I go ahead and go to enter bills, type in Hamlin, say yes, I want to apply it to a purchase order, click on the purchase order, OK. Note again, it drops down to six now because there's only six hours left on the project. All right, so Hamlin says, oh, I'm going to bill you its final bill five hours. I got it done in 14 hours. Everything is fine. All right, so you're going to go ahead in there. And um, you'll see all the information flows through as before and say save and close. Now, right now, that purchase order is going to stay open because it still has that one hour left over. So what you can do is you can come in here to the purchase order, 6238. Let's do a, a quick search for purchase order number 6238. Okay. All right, so it pulls up my purchase order number there. 
I'm going to go ahead and open it up. See here it says that we received 14. We have quantity of 15, but since we, they said that was our final bill, we're going to go ahead and mark this purchase order as closed. It's going to put that big close stamp across the front. Save and close. And that is how you use a purchase order to track service hours for your 1099s.